Hey everyone, take a woke with me through the deep and dark forest of identity politics coming up next on this episode of I'm Not Famous. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So, the subject of identity politics. I've been avoiding that for quite a while. Uh, I've probably wanted to talk about that, but just didn't know <laughs> how to approach it without without sounding like I'm some Hollywood elitist uh, trying to put my two cents worth in. Uh, and I know that sounds harsh, but uh, let's face it, it is annoying when uh, someone from their Hollywood Hills mansion um, likes to speak for all us peasants. Uh, uh, I know that's harsh, but you know, you're a movie actor or a movie actress, and that's what you do. I don't know what point you got a degree in diplomacy or politics, but I just, I do believe everyone's allowed to have their opinion, but as long as we keep it as uh, a debate, something I miss, a truly sensible debate where you can have a discussion about any topic. Uh, that's what used to be so exciting about debating subjects in general. Nothing should be taboo, um, and you should be able to walk away without uh, being enemies uh, having had that discussion, whether you both had all the right facts, maybe you didn't, maybe some were right or wrong, maybe some was emotional, maybe some was just opinion driven. Um, either way, the point is, is just to have that debate, have that discussion, and to come away with it um, being better for it, having learned something, having taught something. Uh, I don't think that's happening a lot these days. I don't think anyone's having discussions or debates. I think lines have been drawn and you have to be on one side or the other, and everything's just become so divisive. I don't know when that happens, or why that happens. Um, you know, everything's about critical race theory and identity polit politics and, and left or right and liberal and conservative, and uh, I, I get it. All those elements were, were always there already, but I think even amongst that in the past, and I could be wrong, I'm only going by media and social media, which again is, is very polarizing these days because it's so immediate. Uh, everyone's just got verbal vomit that just comes out of their mouth and then it goes right to social media. But I still feel like maybe back in the day, not to sound like when I was a kid, but there was still room for a healthy debate and, and two people, whether it was just two people on the street or two politicians or anybody, uh, to walk away not necessarily agreeing, but having a think about it, opening their mind, adding to the knowledge they already have so they can be smarter. Isn't that the point of talking in general? How do, we, how do you think we get anywhere in this world? Uh, by sharing ideas, by, by collectively talking, uh, talking a problem out, talking through a problem. Uh, I guess I always, you know, you, you use what you know and I've worked with a lot of people before in my job and, and projects and, and solving problems, and I've always enjoyed that. And when you solve a problem, you certainly can't take sides based on emotion. You, nothing can be divisive. There can be no lines in the sand. Maybe sometimes, yes, you, you come to an impasse. That certainly happens uh, with anybody. Um, but the point is you need to work through the problem together if you want to get to the end of it. And whether it's finding a solution based on uh, a compromise, which also happens uh, again. I know this doesn't always translate to <laughs> the problems of the world, but I just do believe there's usually a way out of it on the other end. Even if it's not the one that you had in mind, uh, there's a solution. Uh, and in any case, it, it starts with a discussion, a healthy, respectful discussion, which I just don't feel is happening these days at all. Uh, when it comes to, to anything, the lines are being drawn and you have to choose a side. And if you don't, you're a hypocrite, a hypocrite you know? Uh, that's annoying as well. Uh, and if you bring up certain subjects, uh, you're ostracized, you become a pariah. That's also strange to me because you're not gonna get anywhere. Uh, we're not all children, you know? That gets old. I do feel like a lot of adults are acting like kids, you know? They're just, man, 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 and they just get all, they get upset, and they, the emotions are driving them. There's nothing wrong with emotions. We're all emotional beings. But at some point, you do have to grow up 
and take a step back and take a breath. And if you want to be a part of the, <laughs> the big game, which is, you know, for people who are, are influencers, I'll be honest, it's not just about uh, Hollywood types and, and celebrities uh, or politicians. The fact is, is we all have our 15 minutes of fame these days. Not me, I'm not famous, um, hence the name of the show. But my point is, is don't sell yourself short. Everyone is, is possibly an influencer, and you should just be aware of that, especially if you're on any type of social media, whether it's YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, Twitter, whatever your particular flavor is. When you put something out there, um, you're speaking to a friend in one room. You're speaking to a couple friends in a room. Uh, you tell them a secret. Maybe you tell that secret to a larger group of people. Maybe you're standing in front of a large crowd <laughs> talking to them. The point is, is remember, online, on, on social media, that's just exponential times a million. You're talking to 20 people, 20,000, 20 million. Just be aware that the things you say, um, they do reverberate out there in the world. But, <laughs> and that's another problem, everything you say, also gets scrutinized these days, and, and, but that's another story. The point is, is uh, uh, we have this technology to be able to communicate like this, like no other time in the world. You'd think that that would just, uh, that should be fascinating, you know, and it is. But uh, I feel like sometimes I feel like humans aren't evolved enough for it. I'm sorry. I think it came around too quick, and we are just not mature enough to be able to have this kind of technology to get our opinion out there that quickly and then like children we don't stop and deliberate something and think about it we just get on board with it and get emotional and then like a child we we burst out something uh, without thinking about it um so in any case i go back around to it just would be nice to be able to have healthy debates on every subject without there being an issue about you even bringing up that subject that you're labeled something, you're racist or something because you bring up a certain subject just because you want to talk about the possibilities of both sides. Not necessarily right or wrong, but just, just talk about it to see that maybe, oh, I, I didn't realize that. Again, you know, we are all learning every day until the day we die. Don't deny that. Don't deny that you can learn something new or you can teach something new uh, every day. Um, so I suppose... I wanted to talk about uh, one idea, something when I was a kid. I remember the notion of America being a melting pot. I think this was on Saturday morning cartoons sometimes. I used to love that. I think it was Schoolhouse Rock. You should look that up. Those, those were great. Um, Schoolhouse Rock was just uh, similar to something that was on <laughs> Sesame Street. If um, if anyone's to watch a Sesame Street, but uh, there were cartoons that would try to teach you about um, history, um, things that happen in the world, um, um, about America, about the Constitution, uh, about England, about just um, history. And it was fascinating, it was fun, because it would, it would make it into a cartoon or make it a silly song. Anyway, it's called Schoolhouse Rock. And one of them was the idea that, that America was a melting pot. And I love that. I haven't let that go, and I don't know what happened to that. I don't know what happened to that idea of the melting pot. It seems to be that's no longer the right thing, that, that the idea of melting pot has now become cultural appropriation. And I just guess I thought the melting pot notion seemed better. All these cultures coming together, uh, something like New York, think about New York, all different cultures and backgrounds and religions um, all mixing together and and it's fascinating we become stronger as a whole with all these differences the differences are what makes us stronger uh, food like I take food I'm trying to find things that we can all say are pretty innocent but sometimes even get caught up in in politics which is sad <laughs> um, food is amazing it uh, it lights up all five senses. It's, you know, it's one of the most unique experiences that any human can have. Um, food, Mexican food, Italian food, Chinese food, Japanese food, all these different foods. Now it seems to be, oh, if one type of food is being 
whitewashed or it's being branded, um, it's cultural appropriation. You're, you're, you're taking that food from that culture and you're, you're hurting them. You're, you're trying to put a, a label on it and, and, and sell it and turn it into fast food. Well, okay, look, the media and the fast food industry, you know, that's one thing. <laughs> I assure they are trying to, to take certain foods and market it, but that's, that's neither here nor there. The food itself, why can't we all enjoy that? All types of food. It doesn't make sense that you're taking away from anyone's culture by enjoying that food, especially if it becomes popular. I mean, if that's the case, every kid right now sitting down eating spaghetti uh, is uh, offending uh, Italian-Americans. That makes no sense. Um, spaghetti has become a staple <laughs> globally as a fantastic food that everyone loves. So, uh, you know, whether it's uh, tacos and burritos and, and, and spaghetti or sushi, food is part of that melting pot. Every culture, every culture, you know, French and Italian and, and Polish, and German, Mexican, these are all food-driven cultures, and they all have their unique flavors, and it's fantastic. So that's the other thing, when everyone thinks, oh, this particular culture, food, food is the epicenter of, of that culture. I'll be honest, I think food is the epicenter of a lot of cultures, because it's just one of the things that, that does define um, that particular region of the earth or country uh, as unique. And again, that's part of the big melting pot that I thought was so fascinating. Different cultures and languages and backgrounds all coming together and learning to live together. And again, being the better for it. So, yeah, I don't know what happened to the melting pot. It turned into just being divisive and that, that every culture and every background um, has to stand with their own against the other. And that anyone that tries to take from that, um, become a part of it, or use part of that, somehow you're, yeah, you're, you're demeaning that culture and taking away from it. I don't, I don't get that. I don't know how humans got to where we wa are uh, if we had that mentality. We, we wouldn't have, honestly, we wouldn't have. If different, different countries hadn't worked together and, and people from uh, every race, color, and creed, and religion didn't get together for the advancement of, of anything, science and medical and anything, we wouldn't get to where we are now if we stayed behind our little lines and stayed in our groups. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue with that one. Uh, that's not me drawing a line or drawing a line in the sand. That's just the kind of debate I would certainly want to have with one that, that they really should understand the human experience and the human evolution of where we are now uh, didn't happen overnight. Um, millennials aren't the most enlightened people on earth all of a sudden because they drop out of, out of the sky. They didn't drop out of the sky. They are thousands and thousands of years of evolution. And humans, yes, either fighting, going to war, disagreeing, agreeing, but honestly, whether purposely or, or accidentally, all learning from each other in ways that you can't comprehend. Um, yeah, I just don't know why we don't build on that, build on the differences and celebrate them. We should be having celebrations out in the street of every culture day, just every culture, a giant parade. And again, I don't think that should take away from any one background or culture, language, religion. It should just celebrate them all and, and have those exciting discussions about the differences that actually make us all the same, if that makes sense. So let me, let me put it to you in another way, just to keep your mind open and not focus on one particular thing about a person. Because there are many sides of all of us that make up all of us as a unique individual. And I'll get to that one in a second. So let's say there's a guy named John. The house is on fire across the street. He rescues three of the kids inside, and even the dog pulls him out of the burning house. He's a hero. Wasn't even thinking of his own safety. The parents are there. 
oh my God, thank you so much. You saved our kids. And even the dog, you're a real hero. You went back in for the dog. That's amazing. Everyone's there. The news is there. He's trending on all social media. People raising him up on his shoulders. John's the hero. There's a parade a week later. Everyone's going down the street. He's, he's the man of the year. Well, John is actually Asian. Uh, John actually has two ex-wives. John's actually now living with a man. Um, do any of these things so far, do they change your perception of John, the hero who saved the three kids? No. Why would they? Because who he is and the act that he did speaks about him as the individual. His background, his identity, his sexual preferences, color of his skin, his religion, these things didn't change my mind about him in any way, shape, or form. All of these things make up him, the man who saved the kids. So I'm just trying to, again, say that for me, and I do believe this is for a lot of people, I'm not saying there's, there's people out there who don't judge someone on their religion or the color of their skin. I mean, there's still wars about that as far as religion, uh, but, you know, those people can be educated and enlightened and turned. I do believe that. And, and we can move forward. But I just don't believe that, especially in something like America, that there's this systemic problem of everyone focusing on this. There's going to be, there is, if this <laughs> movement, whatever you want to call it, cancel culture or woke, keeps going that way by trying to just identify people and put them in their, their groups and then draw the lines, it will get bad. But I do believe inherently we all just look at each other as humans. We're all humans. We're all in this sad, comical race of life. And at some point in our lives, we can all do amazing things and absolutely stupid things all at the same time. All humans. Man, woman, child, black, white, transgender. Everybody is capable of amazing things and stupid things. And that's just human nature. Uh, again, my thing is if, if you peel back enough layers, you're going to come down to the one thing every single time. Every single time for every human on earth. And that's the individual. There's only one me and there's only one you on this planet. That's a fact. All the parts of me, all the background, my culture, whatever, race, creed, color, politics, religion, all, all those parts of me add to the individual. If you want to identify as just the one thing, I mean, that's fine, but just don't sell yourself short. There's more to you. There's more to everyone. Everyone has an amazing story. I've always been fascinated by that. People's stories. Everybody. I don't care who you are. It's amazing when you start to talk to people, their journey. And we all have that. We're not the one thing. We're many things. Why do we have to get put back into groups? I feel like we're going backwards. I really do. <laughs> You know, we had the 60s and the 70s, and we had the revolutions. My God, we had revolutions before that, but I'll be honest, I feel like, wow, I, I keep bringing up America because I do, I do feel passionately that as, as fucked up as everyone thinks America is, it really was based on some amazing ideals. And many of those were coming true, and I do believe they have come true to this day. I just... <laughs> feel like there's certain groups of people who I feel like they're projecting their anxieties onto the world. Uh, again, I'm just having a discussion. I'm not, I'm not drawing lines in the sand. I'm just having that debate that is it possible? Is it possible that a lot of individuals who have these anxieties themselves have projected that onto the rest of the world? And believe me, that's happened before too. One one individual is walking down the street and sees someone and they fear fearful because that person is a, is a particular race. 
So this person writes a book. By the way, I'm not making this up. These kind of things have happened. People have written books, men and women, and then written it as if, as if, as if it was a scientific study. That shits me the most. <laughs> Someone writes a book on their personal experience and then says, everyone feels like this. We all feel like this. Don't deny it. No. That particular person who wrote that book or said that thing, that they judge someone based on their religion or race or gender, they've judged them and then they say, well, everyone feels like this because I felt like that. Well, no. Let's take a step back. Uh, why don't you ask everyone on the planet, did you, did you take a poll? <laughs> you know? Why don't you try that first? Why don't you run uh, a scientific test? Uh, you know, make sure you have a blind test as well. Make sure that you have a beta test. Maybe make sure that you've covered your bases. Uh, uh, you know, you've mixed all your, your test tubes correctly before you come out with this because the individual feels this way. Everyone does. Again, that's just, again, a comment about hey, one person's problem seems to be becoming everybody's problem now. And one person's anxiety or a particular group's anxieties, and I'm not saying they're not valid, they are, but they're not necessarily systemically part of American culture. I still believe, you know, uh, talking about the founding fathers, you know, everyone wants to rip down every statue possible. Look, in the past, there have been many flawed men and women but once in a while, these flawed individuals at the time did try to shape the future and they saw what could be. And you know, something like the Declaration of Independence, I'm not gonna get preachy about that, but for people to try to tear that down and try to take away that America is founded on racism, they really should read some of these eloquent, eloquent words in these documents. I'm just in a generic way, everyone from every country I'm sure every country who's tried to set up their government, whether it's England, Australia, the UK, Canada, everyone, of course, has a similar way they've, they've crafted their, their country and their system. But look, again, I'm not gonna talk about stuff I don't know about. That's when you get into trouble. But I did grow up in America, I'm an American. Yes, I did take American history. <laughs> That's another thing I feel like people are really missing out on learning history, you really should learn history or you're really bound to repeat it. But anyway, uh, you know, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, these were very altruistic goals and amazing words that set the foundation, not for their time, their time was flawed. They did live in a time where there were terrible atrocities and, and slavery, not to mention that slavery was something happening all around the world. I won't get into that subject right now, but again, it always seems to be America that's the devil when it comes to that. But these were flawed men who came up with an idea for the next generations far, far ahead. And you know what? I thought we were there. I thought we were getting there. I really still hope we are. This was the future when we were getting there that they foresaw to truly be free together, all these cultures, to be able to collectively have a debate and discuss what they want the country to be like, that they would shape it, and they would have representatives in their government that didn't rule with an iron hand. Sorry, England, but you know, hey, we didn't want a king or queen, so we didn't get that. You have your way, we have ours. Sorry it took a revolution, <laughs> a revolution to get there, but we got there. But that was the point, to have representatives for you and you would debate what you felt was right or wrong so that you feel you could come together and you had a resolution to that that wasn't forced upon you. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how we got so lost in the progress that I thought the world was making and, and especially America. At least when I was growing up, it just, maybe I've just been blinded and, and there was just horrible things going on behind the scenes and they haven't stopped to this day. But I don't think that. Uh, and I think COVID didn't help. I think the year of COVID, and it's still going on, left everyone with an immense amount of anxiety, an absolute 
distrust of everyone else, their fellow neighbor, including the government, and it just didn't help with anxiety and, and unfortunately becoming more divisive and, and not trusting. And I don't know, and not just having a, a healthy discussion and an opening of minds, but rather looking at the first thing you read and accepting that as truth. Let me tell you, I know this <laughs> is gonna sound like some cheesy saying, but facts and truth are also vehemently different. There are facts in the world. The universe is bound by mathematics. Sure, they can be bent here and there, but facts, well, <laughs> they don't lie because they are facts. And they don't always make you happy, sorry to say. Sometimes they can be downright upsetting. But whatever side uh, you're on in the line you've drawn in the sand, truth can sometimes get muddy because that can be your truth. You can have grown up a certain way, being taught a certain thing that's not necessarily factual. And unfortunately, now that is part of your DNA. It's, it's all bound in your mind and heart and woven in deep. And that's your truth. It's not necessarily the facts. So I do believe that truth and fact are, are sometimes often different. And to have a debate about the facts uh, doesn't make everyone happy. Uh, I've seen it so much. I've seen discussions where one person automatically starts getting amped up and upset and emotional. And again, you know, emotion can drive great things. Being driven, you're, you're, if you're someone who's brilliant, you need to have emotion too. You can't just be a robot. But the emotion can't just overtake you to the point where you've now cast aspersions on the other person who's trying to have a discussion with you or bring up something that's actually upsetting you. Um, I don't know. That's another tough one. I always thought, uh, you know, being an American, that, that citizenship, you know, there is kind of a cost to that. And the cost is if you want to live in a country that has freedom of speech, which... I, I don't want to debate that one, but that one is pretty clear and I think gets abused in the wrong way sometimes. At its heart, though, you do need to understand that freedom of speech is on both ends. You can have your say, but so can the other person. Sucks, doesn't it? But that's part of it. That's the whole idea. You need to have that talk and come out of it on the other end shaking hands because you know what you both are. I am going to sound preachy, but you're both Americans. You're both living in that country that allows you to do that. I love the people that constantly berate everything about America while living in America. Christ, that cracks me up. <laughs> they're, they're driving down the street in their car, pulling through McDonald's. They're just chilling at the park. They're going home. <laughs> they're watching TV. They are enjoying the amazing freedom that America gets you. Oh, sorry, they have to go to work. Well, boo fucking who. We all have to go to work. <laughs> We all have to provide something to our community, to life, to provide for ourselves, to provide for others, to provide, provide for our family. I mean, you know, everyone has to go to work. That's the worst thing you have to do. But, you know, yeah, to live in the, the country that gives you this and to berate it as being so horrible, such a horrible place to live, that always cracks me up too. But, um, yeah, it's, you know... It's advanced citizenship in America. You have to be able to concede that someone might be burning the flag in front of you and that might piss you off. You, but you can't like bonk them over the head and, and, and say they're, <laughs> they're doing the wrong thing. You can certainly voice your opinion and you can get emotional, but in order for you to now have your turn, which is maybe raise the flag, you have to unfortunately let them do what they're gonna do. I, I'm not saying that's the perfect example, but it's one example, uh, but look, that's an extreme one that probably doesn't <laughs> end well when someone starts burning symbols of the country. But just in general, uh, having a debate seems to be a difficult thing these days, having a discussion, bringing up certain topics. Um, certain topics were always taboo. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're not talking about leather pants and, and leather masks and some guy locked in a, a box that you call gimp again. <laughs> I'm just saying, well, that's just, that's a, 
you know, that's a sexual thing, but maybe taboo is a religion. Maybe taboo is a certain kind of food. Taboo is different for everybody. Um, but the point is, is uh, I thought that you were able to talk about it, especially in, and this will be probably for another time to discuss, um, schools <laughs> seem to be getting uh, a little bit pushed towards one side or the other and uh, of any particular subject, anything, whether it's, like I say, identity politics or the type of books they read or what they're learning or the history of, of, of America. Uh, I did think that going to school was about learning everything, especially so primary school, grade school. Look, you learn all the basics. You've got to learn how to read and write. You have to learn how to add and subtract. You need these basic skills or you can't get through life. And life's getting more complicated. Um, I'll give you that. But you go through the basics. But um, let's say you're at university now. I thought this was especially the place where, wow, you're going to get into some debates that are just going to be fascinating. You're going to, whatever, it's politics or talking about the universe or string theory, whatever your thing is, you can debate that and find another group of like-minded people to talk about that. And then possibly on the other side of the campus, someone who believes something different. Well, why is that a problem? It's not a war. This is a evolved country of adults a learned country with universities that cost, oh my God, hundreds and thousands of dollars, I think, yes, this is something where you should be doing something to evolve the, the country when you get a job, yourselves, each other. So yeah, you should be able to have that debate on that campus about any subject and not flip the fuck out over it. Or, or you can flip out as long as, again, you both leave, agree to disagree, or till next time, maybe I'll win. Uh, again, not about winning or losing, but again, trying to convey your point and maybe you've learned something, maybe they've learned something. That's what I thought higher education was about. The freedom of that. But to not pressure and push and then to not assume and to not oppress, you know? Lots of things can be oppressive. You'd be surprised. <laughs> I feel, feel like it's coming from the other direction now. As in, now you have to believe certain narratives and think certain thoughts, and if you bring up certain subjects, like I say, you become a pariah. You can't, you can't be on that side. It's not that you just have a difference of opinion. You're wrong. You're actually wrong. And then now <laughs> this new law might say you're wrong. I'm just saying it's a slippery slope, folks, <laughs> when, when the government gets involved, especially when the government starts creeping in and saying, hmm, I think this action be, should be taken based on this group or this narrative or this particular thing that we've chosen this side. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about thou shalt not steal and uh, you know, killing people. All right, again, you know, for God's sake, let's be serious here. You know what I'm talking about. All the little nuances that I feel like we're starting to get way caught up in too much. We should all just chill for a minute and and just all know that we're all humans and we're all going through a shit time. That, yeah, your government shouldn't start pushing specific laws that really start to invade your freedom to just, frankly, live your life. Uh, you know, the freedom to be an asshole. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying to be cruel or yell at someone or hurt someone or to be racist or to yell at them or to force them to believe a specific thing or to incite violence or riots. <laughs> Let's not talk about riots. But really, you know, you have the freedom to be an asshole if you want. <laughs> Until they outlaw that. Be a lot of people in jail in America if they outlaw ass assholes. I'm probably one of them. But <laughs> the point is, I don't know. Freedom is a slippery slope when you start making more laws about freedom if those laws aren't just about thou shalt not steal and <laughs> thou shalt not kill. Uh, but, you know, in any case, again, I'm not going to talk about stuff that I'm not a specific expert in unless it's something I'm looking up and maybe I've got lots of reading material and I've, I've researched it and, and come up with a healthy conclusion uh, and a topic that I'd like to debate. 
then yes, by all means, go ahead. But I don't think anyone's doing that. We all just read shit and post it and get all excited and, and then get all upset when someone dislikes it. We're so obsessed with the like, when someone replies something, not agreeing to your opinion, well, that's when we all go ape shit. But anyway, we've, uh, we've all got the Andy Warhol, 15 minutes of fame. He certainly predicted that. It just seems to be lasting a lot longer than I thought. Maybe it's more five minutes of fame now, but more people. So I think that's what it is. The population has exploded, so we get less time in the sun. So you got five minutes of fame, but everyone gets it, you know, from the parents pushing their little kid on on uh, on TikTok to uh, to open the new uh, the new toy or whatever, you know. Let's let's uh, let's use the kid. Hey, here's a present. Open this. Get a, a billion views. All right, money in the bank. All right. It's a bit innocent, but also a little bit insidious, <laughs> you know. Everyone's pushing for that, that famous moment. But like I say, I'm not famous, so I can talk about whatever I want, and I will. So I hope you liked that little, little chat and hope it got you thinking. By all means, definitely give me some, some feedback and um, let me know about other topics that you'd like me to talk about. And don't worry, it won't just always be me rambling. I will have guests from time to time, and uh, hopefully we'll have some healthy debates. So... Thanks for listening, and uh, catch you later. Bye.